welcome to my presentation on the case study we did for the first assignment by myself, Hannah Chadwell. So reflecting back on assignment one, I have decided to focus on pirate radio aspect and take you through changes in development from how radio started and how it became so popular. This presentation will take you through step by step in a timeline method on how pirate radio was entertaining a mass culture in popular music. In the middle of the swinging 60s, several ships moored just outside British territorial water to challenge the, BBC, the radio monopoly of the BBC. The two most popular radio stations were Radio London and Radio Caroline. Forty years on after Radio Caroline came Ross Revenge, located on the outskirts of Essex, a documentary with key skews and presenter on Radio Caroline takes us through what it's like to be in pirate radio. Government tried to shut them down but couldn't, as they operated out to sea in international waters. Several pirate ships were launched, probably the most famous was Radio Caroline. Almost overnight, there were lots of opportunities for buddy disc jockeys like myself. So in the springtime of 1964, I reported for my first shift on Radio Caroline. I took along with me a small movie camera and recorded events on board. I recently came across the film in my attic. I hadn't seen it for decades, and until now the footage has never been broadcast. It's a unique insight into what life was like working on pirate radio. Radio Caroline was more off the Essex coast. To get out to the ship, you had to pass through customs and immigration in carriage and show our passports. There was no problem leaving British soil, but two weeks later on our return trip, we were sometimes strip searched by customs looking for drugs and alcohol. To travel out to the Radio Caroline ship, we had to travel some 15 miles in a small boat. And let me tell you that in bad weather, that wasn't exactly a bundle of laughs. Quite often it would be very, very choppy, and not all the disc jockeys had their sea legs, and they would be sick, and there wasn't too nice a time travelling, which would take anything up to an hour and a half. And then we'd arrive at the Radio Caroline ship, and it would be a leap of death, literally, where you've got a small boat bobbing up and down, and you've got the large boat Radio Caroline doing that, and you have to time it so that you've jumped from the small boat on board to Radio Caroline. And if you miss, you're dead. Forty years later, another Caroline ship, the Ross Revenge, is moored at Tilbury Docks in Essex. Watching my old home movie has really brought back memories, so I've come to have a look around the ship. Joining me is one of my old pirate mates, Tony Blackburn. God, just like old times, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, isn't it? It uh, brings back memories a bit, doesn't it? Not half. Yeah, three, not half. <laughs> so, so I have a three minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we were out on the different ships for three years when we go, weren't we? We were. I mean, I, I really do think if it hadn't been for Radio Caroline, um, wouldn't have been able to go for radio. I think it gave us a career. Yeah. You've got a choice of any radio you'd like to play on the programme, so what do you, what do you play? Well, I think what I'd rather like to hear is Reach Out and Over Over before talks. Good places, me. What a fantastic record. At the height of Pirate Radio, there were nearly a dozen different stations broadcasting off the East Anglian coast. So here we are in the main studio. Hmm, looks a bit antiquated, don't you think, Tony? Yeah, it worked, didn't it? It brings back lovely memories. I mean, uh, the thing I remember always is that when we were in the very high seas, the Ten Force Gale, mm. uh, we would be thrown around, but the music kept playing. And I used to throw ashtrays around, well, anyways, to make it sound more dramatic. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> you little deadly. Well, because, I mean, you know, people love that, didn't they? The, well, I think the great thing about the, the pirate ship was the fact it was a family atmosphere, wasn't it? Very much. Well, this is Tom Jones, wishing you really kind of like a happy birthday and uh, a sweet future. That is 65, 66, and I hope 67, and 68, 69. So, as you heard, Tony Blackburn, Keith Skews saying, it's that without Radio Caroline, they wouldn't have been able to have their careers that they've had previous in radio and that they're still having now. So it's all thanks to a pirate radio. And at the beginning of the clip, um, Keith Hughes quotes that it was a unique insight into what it's like working in Radio Caroline. Um, bro broadcasting offshore lasted for around three years, 
Um, in the South, the Tony Blackburn say that it was a family orientated station. Tom Jones appears on the show wishing Radio Caroline a happy birthday, unlike the BBC, they play non stop pop music. Radio Caroline made some of the well known pop bands and artists that we all know and love today a success, such as the Walker Brothers, Gene Pitney, and the Beach Boys. The main driver behind the rise of the pirate radio was the lack of opportunity to listen to new bands such as the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. As the BBC would only dedicate one programme a week to play hit music. Many of the presenters on pirate radio went on to be household names such as Roger Day, Simon D, Johnny Walker, Pete Hughes, Roger Scott, Kenny Everett, Paul Cash, Tony Windsor, Ed Stewart, Tony Blackburn, and Tommy Vance. In response to the success of pirate radio stations, the government passed a Marine Broadcasting Offence Act into law, with the penalties for continuing to broadcast illegally, meaning that the pirate radio stations were effectively closed down overnight. In an attempt to appease the listeners who were outraged with the loss of pirate radio stations and 24 hour a day music and news, the government commissioned an introduction of Radio 1 and 2. Pirate radio was seen by some people as a harmless fun in the actions of agency in taking enforcement actions against stations heavily handed and unnecessary. The truth is that participants in pirate radio is seen to have a criminal and antisocial activity and station operation are a menace to legal broadcasting and the public alike. So that was just a brief overline of what Pirate Radio actually is, and I'm going to go into a bit more depth um, with specific dates and times of what actually happened during Pirate Radio, because obviously there were more stations than Radio Caroline, Radio London, and Ross Revenge. So to start with, we've got um, March 28 in 1964. Radio Caroline was the first UK offshore Pirate Radio station that goes on air. And on May 9th, um, Radio Atlanta Pirate Radio Ships also goes on air. On June 3rd, Radio Invicta, another UK pirate radio station, goes on air from Red Sands Tower in the, in the Thames Estuary. On June 5th, Manx Radio broadcasts its first programme from a caravan. The initial, part, uh, the initial potential audience for commercial radio programmes was estimated to be around 2,500 listeners. On July 2nd, Atlanta and Radio Caroline merged. On July 13th, Radio Caroline North stopped transmissions on a 197 metre offshore. In September, Radio Such changes its name to Radio City. And on November 24th, Manx Radio, the first legal land-based commercial radio station in the British Isle, goes on air. On December 19th, Radio London goes on air. The regular programming began on December 23rd. And in 1965, King Radio Pirate Station goes on air from the former Radio Invicta. On September 25th, King Radio renamed to Radio 390. Radio Essex Pirate Station goes on air from Knock John Tower to the Thames Estuary. December 31st, Radio Scotland Pirate Ship goes on air at 11.55. In 1966 in May, Radio England and Radio Britain stations go on air. June 4th, Radio 270 Pirate Ship goes on air broadcasting from Northern England. And in December, Radio Essex Pirate Station is unsuccessfully, uh, no, is successfully prosecuted in UK, but is renamed BBMS, which stands for Britain's Better Music Station. Unfortunately, in 1967, BBMS Pirate Radio Station closes um, after the failure of its appeal. And on February 8th, Radio City closes at midnight, as well as Radio 227 closes on the 23rd of July. And on the 28th of July, Radio 399 also closes. August the 6th, Radio 355 closes. And on August the 14th, many stations plan shutting down due to the impending introduction of marine broadcasting offences law. Radio London closes down at 3 p.m. and Radio Scotland and Radio 270 closed just minutes before midnight. Radio Caroline was re renamed Ra Radio Caroline International and keeps broadcasting. On August the 15th, the Marine Broadcasting Offences Act came into force. This was the effect of outlawing pirate radio in the UK 
and making criminals of any person or business involved in any way with board masters. In 1968, March 3rd, both Radio Caroline and Radio Caroline International were in a well-planned operation organised by the Wisdom Miller Company. A short message was read out to the DJ staff and crew, then both ships were towed to Holland. Eventually, they were both put up for auction in May 1972. And on May 29, 1972, Radio Caroline was put up for auction, and unfortunately was sold for scrap and broken up. In 2003, and to today's 2013, Radio Caroline is still on air, but has an, as an official satellite radio station where you can um, have podcasts read out from Radio Caroline. Here are the references I've used throughout the presentation um, for the video clips and information and timeline events. And thank you very much. Um, I'd now like to ask if there are any questions. Um, do you think that pirate radio is still around today? Um, I kind of think all modern day radio has been shaped around pirate radio because obviously when the laws came into action, um, they most of the disc jockeys did get put onto Radio 1 and Radio 2. So I kind of think that it's kind of always been around, um, but technology has kind of overrun. So obviously when you saw the video, um, Tony Blackburn and Peter Spees were in shock with like how they were working. So I think it has always been around, but I think modern day technology has kind of taken over with social networking as well. Thank you. Um, it's really blurry on this. Is it? Mm. But 